everybody. It's Miss Kim from Naturally STEM. So very good to be with you today. Um, <clears throat> but if you don't mind, I'm really thirsty. So give me a minute, okay? <sighs> water. I love water. Who else loves water? Well, I hope you got some with you. Does anybody got water to drink right beside you? If you don't, go get some, because water is what we're going to be talking about today. Water is one of my favorite things to talk about in nature, because it's one of those natural resources that is very important to us. Can you guys give me a couple of ideas really quickly in your head? Um, how do we use water? Why is water important to us? Well, what I just do? I just drank some water, didn't I? What else do we do with water on a daily basis? We wash our dishes with it. We cook with it. We wash our laundry. We take showers. We brush our teeth. Um, we water our animals. We might water the garden. Um, we uh, use it when we make our clothes. So factories and things like that uses a lot of water per day when we even make shirts, when we make the plastic, when we make paper, we use water for everything that we do and it's very important. So um, one of the most important things that we need water for is ourselves. Can you guys tell me how much water our bodies is made up of? How much are you made of water? Hmm. Well, it's about 60%, okay? And I'm gonna show you really quickly a nice way for you to visualize that. So I have me a person right here, and I have um, divided him into 10 different parts. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. Now, if I wanted 60% of this 100%, because 10, my 10 pieces make a whole, so it's 100%. So if I wanted to um, show 60%, how many of these blocks would I color in, my friend? Wonderful answer, that is exactly right. So I'm gonna do just that. We're gonna color in six of those blocks, right? So one, two, three, four, five, and I'm doing it really, really quickly, so I didn't color in all of it, but you're gonna get the idea. And six, okay? So six parts of your body, or 60% of your body is made up of water. And that is very, very important thing for you to know because water in your body is just like oil in the car. So you know how the oil in the car of your mom and dad, grandma and grandpa, whoever, they are, they have to put oil in their car. Have you seen them do that before? The oil keeps all of the engine parts and all that stuff really lubricated, really oiled up and it makes everything move like it's supposed to. That's what water does for us inside our body. It takes and it moves around our heart and our lungs and our kidneys and all of that stuff. And it keeps everything lubricated or, or slick moving really well. And that's how our body works. So water is very important to us um, as humans because we simply need it to live. Only not only inside our bodies, but we need to drink water. We need to stay well hydrated. We're, we should be drinking about eight ounces of water a day. It's very, very important that you stay hydrated. So um, always keep that in mind. So we know that water is important for us. We use it daily. We use a whole bunch of it daily. One person um, will use about 100 gallons of water per day. So that's an awful lot. Um, but my question to you right now, here's what I want you to think about. How much water do you think 
makes up the world, okay? So this is my lovely earth, as you can see. And so can you see all of it? Now, as I turn it, friends, what do you see more of? The blue or the green? Might be a little hard to see um, with my camera. I'm not quite sure. So a little better, darker version is the smaller one that I have. You can really see the blue that is different from the green, which is all the land, okay? So it looks like there's more blue or more water on the earth than land. And that's absolutely, whoops, I just about dropped it. And that's absolutely true. I made up this chart. We're gonna be uh, a little math intensive today, okay? How much water on the earth in percent? Okay, we're gonna keep it at percents just like we did 60% of our body, okay? So if you notice my graph right here, I have made 10 columns, 10 blocks across. So I have 10 in my column, and then I made 10 rows down. So 10 times 10 equals what? Right on, very good, you guys are good. 100, okay? So I have 100 blocks in my square, and for me today that equals 100%, okay? Now, if you look at the globe again, like we just had, let's try not to spill the water. If you look at that globe again, make a guess for me how much you think is made of water. Oh, I love your guesses, you guys, you guys are great. You're right, it is about 70% made up of water. So if I wanted to color that on my graph, how would we do that? So think about the person we just did, okay? So 70% out of 100%, how could I do that and show that in blocks? Well, how many would we need to color to get that? Yeah, you guys are so good. 70, right? Now, how would be a quick way for me to be able to do that instead of going one, two, three, four, five? I'm not sure I can keep up with you guys. You're smarter than me, I'm thinking. So, since I said that we had 10 squares per column and that we have 10 rows, if I just counted down one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and then over one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Right? So seven times ten equals seventy. So if I color everything in these squares, and we're just gonna do this the quickest way, that's gonna show our 70% because we will color in or X in right now just for time's sake. We will show 70 parts colored in. So that will be 70% out of 100%. Okay. You guys are fantastic. Smart ease, look at that. So that shows that there is 70% of the earth made of water. So then how much would that leave that's left for land? 30%, right? 70 times, or 70, excuse me, 70 plus 30 equals 70 plus 30 equals 100. So that would mean 30% was left for land. Okay. Wonderful. That was fantastic. I like that. Here's another way for me to show just that. And this is a little activity I like. This is another really cool way to show. 
This is exactly what we were talking about. So you guys see the cups that I have in front of me. And I'm going to stand on my little thing. So I'm going to, I'm going to get a little taller here in a minute. It's because I want to um, show you some things in the front. But all my cups right here is going to show you just exactly what I just did. I have water right here, my friends. And this is all of the water that is on Earth. Now I put some blue food color in it so you guys can see it better. So as you can see, this is all of the water. This is 100% of the water that's on the Earth. Okay. Now, on my Earth here, where is most of that water tied up in? Absolutely right. It's in the oceans, in the saltwater oceans. So in the oceans, the oceans take up about 97%, there we go, about 97% of all of the water that's on the earth, okay? Now, that's in our oceans. Now, can we drink that water? Oh, I'm sorry, that was 100% water. I forgot to put my little signs out there. That was that was my 100%. I just poured 97% into the ocean, which is salt water. So for salt water, can we drink that? You are absolutely right. This water here is all salt water oceans, and we can't drink this, so this is not accessible to us. And so that's not a good thing. So let's continue our journey. So what we have left then of potable water or fresh water, potable, my friends, is another word for fresh water or water that is clean enough for us to drink, okay? So salt water, fresh water. We drink fresh water or potable water, which is enough for us, clean enough for us to drink. So, after the oceans take up 97% of the water, we have 3% that's left for us, that's available to us. But, bear with me on this, okay? This might get a little confusing, but just listen to what I'm saying. Out of the 3% of the fresh water that is available to us, Seventy percent of that is tied up in what? Think North Pole. What's happening up there? Seventy percent of the three percent of the fresh water we have on the Earth is tied up in ice caps and glaciers. So this is frozen water that we can't get to and utilize to drink, to wash with, to take showers with, stuff like that. Okay, keep that in mind. So that leaves 30% of that 3%. There we go. 30% of that 3% that is tied up in groundwater, tied up in the soil, or in some clouds, in plants. Plants need water, don't they? They need it to survive. What about all the wildlife on Earth? We all need the wildlife to have water. They have to have it to survive. Now, when it's inside their bodies and inside the plants, inside us, we can't be utilizing it like drinking it, swimming in it, things like that, right? So that's where all of this water is tied up at. So my friends, then what does that leave us 
to be able to drink, wash with, cook with, manufacture our clothes with, make our food with, all of those other things. How much does that leave us to do all of those things that we need to do? Drink, wash with, make our food with, make our wash our clothes with, take showers with. For every one of us, it really takes all we have left is that right there. You see that one little drop of water, my friend? In percentage terms, that is 0.003% of 1% of all of the water on earth is potable or drinkable or usable for us. So think about that. From all of the water to this little dot is all we have that's accessible to us. Now, really quickly to just show you a different visual that's a lot quicker. This is all the water that's on earth. So this is it right here. So from all of the water on earth to that last little thing I showed you. That's it, my friend. From this to this, okay? So we have a lot of water on earth, we absolutely do. But the tiniest, tiniest little fraction is what is left for us to be able to use on a daily basis. Isn't that crazy? What do you think of that? I think that is the craziest thing, right? What else is crazy to me is that, that just made me thirsty again, so I gotta take another drink. You guys wanna take a drink with me? Take a drink. <sighs> that is awesome. You want to know what else is crazy? This water that I just drank and this water that you just drank is the same water that dinosaurs were drinking way back all those many, 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 many years ago. You just drank water that dinosaurs drank. Did you know that? How cool, right? Here's how that happened. All the water that we have right now is all of the water that started when the earth did. So when it all happened and the water was created, that water is the same water that we are drinking today. It just gets recycled and recycled and recycled in the what? You bet. In that good old process we call the water cycle. Now this is kind of um, not finished, but we're gonna finish it right here, right now, okay? So as you can see, if you guys have ever known anything or heard anything about the water cycle, the water cycle is very cool in that the water cycle connects all of the spheres that we have um, within the earth. So the atmosphere, the air, the hydrosphere, all of the water on earth, the geosphere, so that's the solid ground, and the biosphere, all of the life that's in it. We are part of the biosphere, part of the life. All of these spheres that surround the earth and the earth is connected through the water cycle, okay? Now I've um, tried to give us a couple of hints on what is going on here. So if you know, help me out a little bit and we're gonna show you, okay? So we have our beautiful sun over here, right? But as we come over here, this is my cloud. And if you can tell, I got my lightning bolt, right? So when we have moisture up here in the clouds getting ready to fall down, that's called condensation. 
condensation, okay? And when it gets full, those clouds get really full up there and the weather is the right weather down here, it's either going to snow, these little blue dots are my snow, or it's going to rain. Okay, and when it comes down out of the clouds and falls back down to earth, that's what we call precipitation. And if I spell it wrong, I, I apologize. Precipitation. So when it falls down, precipitation. And then when it collects down here in our lakes and our streams and our rivers, that's exactly it. It's called collection. And then when the sun comes down and shines on that water again and it warms it up, what happens? We have little vapors. This is the part that sometimes you can see in the mornings. And this right here, this is the misty morning here on the lake. And so when it rises up as a vapor or a gas, then this is, excuse me, this is called evap. Oration. Right? So evaporation. So the water evaporates back up into the sky and it um, hits the clouds up there and it condenses in there and it waits till the white, blah, 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 the right weather conditions and then it either snows. Now, if it comes down in a snow, what are those water mo molecules look like? Okay, you're going to see water molecules in three different forms. What are they? Absolutely solid, liquid, or gas. So think about it. If it's in snow form, right? Think about the snowflakes. That'd be solid, liquid, or gas. Man, you guys are good. It's going to be a solid. Okay. But if it's coming down in raindrops, Raindrops keep falling on my head. Okay, what's it going to be? Right, a liquid. Okay, and when it's down here in the collection in the rain, in the rivers and streams and the lakes, it's of course still a liquid. Good. But when it starts evaporating back up into the sky, what is that then? That's absolutely right, my friends. That's where you're going to see your gas or your vapor, as we can call it. Okay? So, this water, the water continuously cycles in everything that we do. And you're going to see it coming in a solid, a liquid, or a gas. This picture, my friends, isn't very good, but this is actually liquid water on a lake. Right, This part right here is ice. So, it's starting to freeze right around the bank of the lake, deeper water, it is still liquid, but then in the early morning, the mist or the evaporation as it's coming up out of the water back up into the sky. So all three states of matter at one time. I challenge you this winter to go out and see if you can see all three states of water molecules at one time. That would be awesome, wouldn't it? Very nice. You guys did that really, really well. If you guys want to see this at home, I have a really, really quickly, one last experiment for us. And this is for you guys to do at home. So what you need to get, I'm gonna put my dry erase marker lids on so we don't dry them out. So what you need at home is a Ziploc baggie. And I just use the sandwich size. Okay, you're going to want a half a cup of water, so find your measuring cup, your uh, measuring uh, whatever you have, but half a cup, and then you can just have one marker, but I used three, okay? So we're going to kind of draw on our baggie what we just drew on that board, and then I have what I took was a uh, just a picture frame so I could show you guys so I don't have to walk away from my camera. Then we're, we're going to draw on our um, bag what we just drew on 
the big board. We're going to pour the half cup of water inside the bag, zip it up, then we will take this. You will go find a window in your house or apartment and you will tape it to the inside. Now I just brought this so I could show you how you how you would tape it up to your window. Okay, and you're going to want the light to shine on it, and then you will see the water cycle in all its glory. Okay, so what you're going to do, I'm going to set this to the side for a minute. I'm going to take my bag, and I'm going to take a marker. Now, you need a marker of some kind because a pen and, a, and pencils really don't work on this. So, take a marker, and in this corner right here, let's make our cloud. Okay, my cloud. Now, I'm just going to make some lightning. So there's my lightning. Now I'm just going to come down here to the bottom and just make some squiggly lines all across the bottom for my water. Okay, just like that. Now I used yellow for the sun. So over here in this corner, make a sun. Now I don't know if you're gonna be able to see it, friends. But it's there. Can you see that right there? I'm scared you can't. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm going to recolor that with black so you guys can see it. But by all means, for yours, just use your beautiful, beautiful yellow, okay? So I have my cloud, I have my river, and I have my sun. Now what else are we going to put on there? Beautiful. We're going to put some snow up here, just some dots. And then we're going to put some raindrops be falling on my head. I just love that song. You can't tell that. I have to sing it every time I hear raindrops. Okay, so we got some raindrops. Right? So snow, raindrops, a river, and I'm just going to make a few squiggly lines up to the side to show where the vapor is going to go when the sun heats me back up. So does that look like what we made on our big board? Absolutely. So then what you're going to do is you're going to open it. You're going to pour your half a cup of water very very carefully into it you're going to then close it and you're going to make some observations okay oh then you're going to tape it to your window go find your window and tape it and it's going to look just like that okay Beautiful. So then you're going to make some observations. Look at it. What do you think is going to happen? I like your thoughts. Keep your thoughts. So what you're going to do is you're going to just let that sit there for um, a little while, half hour, hour. See what happens then. Write it down if you'd like. Then come back about two hours later, three hours later, and see what's going on. Now, I'm gonna put that to the side. I did one a little earlier, and I stuck it to my window, so I'm gonna go get that and see what it's doing to show you, give you an idea of what yours might look like. So, I'm gonna walk away for just a second. It's very hard when, you're, when your film can't, does it move? But look what I have going on, friends. Can you see that? I have condensation going on, or I have the, uh, yeah, condensation going on right now. So that would be that part up in here. I'm starting to see a couple of big drops. So that would be like my raindrops, and that will drop back down into here after a while. And it's only been about an hour since I've done mine. So my observations from... The beginning of my experiment to just one hour into my experiment 
is dramatically different. How cool is that? That is pretty awesome. So can you tell really quickly, my friends, that water is important, right? So we need to do our part into helping um, keep it as clean as possible. Because even though we have the same water that has always been here, it's getting harder and harder to clean. And when we use it and use it and use it and we misuse it, we dump things in our lakes and waters that we shouldn't sometimes, things like that that we don't think about and we don't really mean to do, but it happens. So we need to think about those things. My question to you, friends, is what can you do at home and at school to help conserve or use it wisely our water resource? There are some things you can do when you are that's right, when you are taking a shower, take a three minute shower, okay? If you like baths, I love baths, but now I only take a bath if it's about ankle deep, okay? I don't wait till it fills all the way up. I just get in water about ankle deep. I do my thing and then I get out. How many people, when you're washing your dishes, do you let that rinse water just run? What could you do instead? Beautiful. You get a tub and stick it in there, put that, put water in there and use that or just put the little stopper into the sink. Those are wonderful, wonderful ideas. Now here's my challenge for this week. I want you guys to think about what you could do again at home or at school. When you guys are ready to go back to school, how can we help your school conserve water? My challenge for you this week is to Think about that and then post your answers to me on my Facebook. Go to facebook.com backslash naturally stem and then post down at the bottom. Say, hey, Miss Kim, I have some great water conservation ideas. Here they are. And I would love to hear them and see them. And then I will post them for everybody else to get an idea of and use as well. That was an awesome time. I appreciate you guys coming and joining me. I hope you had a good time, understand why water is important, and I will see you later. Bye, friends.